Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> What's going on people? Back with a bang. Here to bring you guys my weekly watch list for this week. So the first thing I would like to say is make sure you drop a thumbs up on this video because I'm recording this right now at 2 a.m. It's 2 a.m. here. But I know you guys do want a weekly watch list. So I'm going to start off with the earnings place for this week. And to be honest, it's going to be a hot week. Last week was a hot week, but this week is going to be another hot week. So let's pull up what earnings are up this week. So tomorrow, WM potentially on my radar i'll see what that does not really got any plan anything planned for that one but then tuesday before open shopify shopify i'll be honest i'm looking at calls i'm expecting good numbers for shopify airbnb after hours that's going to be interesting same with upstart airbnb and upstart i have a feeling they can both drop drastically because that seems to happen a lot with airbnb we can actually take a look at airbnb right now airbnb and upstart i think both of them seem to drop after earnings Airbnb there, Red Day, there, dropped after earnings, dropped after earnings. I have a feeling Airbnb drops, and then the other one, Upstart, ticker symbol UPST, tanked after that earnings, tanked after that earnings, could also be dropping. So those two, I think maybe they're dropping. Then Robinhood, I'll just keep my eyes on it just to see what they're doing, and Lyft as well, because Lyft, as you know, they're competitors with Uber. Lyft has been struggling as of late, especially when you can see that in the stock price is, is reflected in what the price action is of the stock each and every day. So keep that on your radar. Then moving on to uh, Wednesday, sorry, after close, Fastly, I'm in Fastly calls, so I'm expecting a run up until earnings. And same with Oxy, I'm expecting it to push. But the thing with Oxy is it's similar to CVX and Exxon where it can just pop any, any given day. So just keep that on your radar. Thursday is really the one I'm watching most. After hours, you've got DraftKings, Coinbase, and Roku. DraftKings. Well, you you know the Super Bowl's on right now, actually. You guys who are watching it, I think it's a boring game. It's, I think it's like almost halftime and it's 3-0. DraftKings, I feel like this is going to really push this week. I think DraftKings is going to be one of the big movers, and along with Coinbase. But here's the thing with Coinbase. It's going to be a big mover if crypto continues to run. So Bitcoin, I believe, is back up above 47K for the first time since, I think, July. If we just have a look at, let's look at the weekly chart. 47K, oh, April 2022. What? I didn't realize that. So, okay, Bitcoin is back at 47K for the first time since April 2022. I did not know that. Okay, yeah, I'm expecting Coinbase to really rally. Didn't realize, yeah. And then Roku. Mixed feelings with Roku. Again, it's going to be one that you just have to watch until the earnings. If I pull up the chart, four-hour chart. Yeah, it's not really showing me a lot. It looks slightly bullish. So maybe it's, yeah, it could potentially be breaking above. Back up to the highs from a few months ago. Last earnings gapped up. Earnings before that also gapped up. Then a couple of, yeah, a gap up and then a, an earnings where it sold off a little bit. So maybe Roku runs. We'll have to do a bit more research on that one. But for those of you who are in the Discord, I'll talk to you more about that one. Just remind me to talk about Roku. But then let's move on to um, my stocks to watch because that's mainly what I'm watching for this week you know, in regards to earnings. The trade desk, TTD is there as well. DoorDash is there well, as well. Sorry, Wendy's as well. A bit of a meme stock, to be honest. So you can also have a look and see what those do. But yeah, like I said, me personally, well, let's, you know, let's start off with just the situation we're in right now. First thing I want to point out is CPI is Tuesday. That could affect how the market fluctuates. And the second thing I want to point out is we've just hit all-time highs on SPY, QQQ. The markets are running. It doesn't necessarily mean it's time for a pullback right away. A lot of people get that mistaken. They see the markets running, they think it's time for a pullback. Friday, for example, the markets jumped up pre-market and then people were like, oh yeah, it's going to pull back today, this and that. It pulled back slightly and continued running. There you go. Record week for the S&P 500. This is, this is the kind of news you should be looking at. S&P 500 record week, Chinese stocks rallying. Not this. I don't know why they put this first. You shouldn't be looking at Brock Purdy and Christian McCaffrey and all that. You should be focused on, on your stocks, your Airbnbs, your Chinese stocks, your Alibabas, not your Patrick Mahomes. That's what you should be focused on. Open AI CEO, Sam Altman sees. All right, cool. Let's jump into my stocks to watch. 
I'm going to kick it off with Tesla, the mighty Tesla, because Tesla's been playing games recently and it's one of those that you had to catch it like intraday. So it's at a point where it's kind of bounced along my level of support. And the reason I'm pointing out Tesla is I'm going to draw, let's say, a channel because I think I think we've got something for Tesla. Um, let's just draw it. Let's see. You can start around. You can start around here. This is what you need to do when you're marking up your charts, right? We'll just extend it all the way down here, okay? And we'll just draw another one just to show you kind of what the trend is with this one. I'll do it like this. Yeah, okay? So when you look at that, you can expect Tesla to kind of bounce on this level here and push up, right? And probably trade a little bit higher just to pull on back and then keep pushing higher. So we might hit 225 and then drop and sell off again, but 225 is still $30 away. So that's what I'm saying. I'm looking at Tesla calls and maybe swinging Tesla calls for 30 to 45 days out. I will say I'm in a $250 call for, I believe, the 15th of March with Tesla, which is up about 12%. So it's a good indication of what could be coming and what could be occurring. Um, I mean, yeah, that's really what I've got for Tesla. I'm thinking calls and intraday, you could trade puts and this and that. I won't really be swinging puts right now, but I think if you want to swing Tesla, you're probably looking at calls. Then I'm going to move on to QQQ because I just pointed this one out. So let's scroll out, let's zoom out, let's zoom out. In fact, let's pull up the weekly chart. So QQQ, right? You see, we were in this period back in 2022 where we kind of consolidated and we just started to break out. I think before that, you can't actually see it on this chart. I wonder if the daily chart shows it. Also not. Okay, I think before that, SPY might show it, but there was a pe period just just post-pandemic, right at the end of the pandemic, where we saw the kind of highs. It was like November, okay, December 2021, right? But we saw these highs, 478 it was for SPY. And then from there, we just sold off consistently, sold off, made lower highs, lower lows. And we're finally back up at those levels again since, uh, yeah, I'd say November of 2023. And we broke away, broke out from those levels. So a similar story with QQQ. Some were probably expecting to see a double top, which didn't happen. We broke out and broke free. But I do want to keep that on your radar for pullbacks because I think they're going to be pullbacks now. We are, like I said, we are at a period of time where it's a bit overextended. So I would be looking for day trading puts because there's going to be pullbacks along the way. And if it does continue pushing higher, that's fine. You know, if you want to invest in that long term then maybe you should do that but i think swinging calls is a little bit risky right now where we are not saying swing puts i'm just saying day trading puts is what i'll be looking to do potentially we could be seeing a sell-off or two here and there again potentially that's my opinion then palantir pretty simple with this one it's overextended yet yeah, i'm expecting it to pull back and push higher i'm expecting really to hit 30 dollars this week that is my price target for palantir who knows if that happens? Again, these are these are my ideas. These are watch lists. It's not financial advice. The reason I think Palantir pushes is because they've had their earnings. You've seen the good numbers. We've seen how they've beat expectations. Earnings per share, revenues increased, the huge AI plans, operating income has increased. We've seen all they're doing. And we see that people are starting to catch on and people are starting to buy into the hype, which is why I think this can still push another 12, 15% this week and push up towards $30. Walmart is next, WMT. Walmart, that green line is my price target, $170.61. I think we will pull back to the moving average on the daily chart and then push higher. I am swinging calls. If you see the four hour chart, it's holding the moving averages nicely. I'm expecting us again to push up. You know, we wicked off that level of resistance and we we stayed above the nine day moving average, which is which is a good sign. And even when we fell back below the nine day moving average back in January, we pushed up again pretty quickly. So earnings is 26th or 20th of February. And until then, I'm still expecting this to stay steady, stay continuing to the upside and show more signs of bullish strength than it does bearish. Then, because I just mentioned earnings, I want to talk about a couple of the stocks that have earnings this week. First up, Shopify. Their earnings is always very spectacular. Now, 
if you just look at the let me pull up the daily chart for Shopify last earnings zoom we took off the earnings before that zoom we took off the earnings before that we sold off a little bit but it wasn't drastic earnings before that we took off so from the last four or five earnings you're seeing pretty consistent bullish momentum after Shopify does report and again it's something I'll be looking to trade to the upside it is also a bit overextended just like Palantir but it doesn't mean we can't push higher looking at the four, four hour chart we're a bit closer to the moving averages but again I'm seeing signs of bullish momentum I'm seeing strength here that's what I like to see and I mentioned Oxy for a stock reporting earnings let me just check that one out before I move on to DraftKings Oxy's 4 hour chart is not telling me a lot apart from the fact that it's been getting rejected by the moving average. Bit of a strange candle there. And again, rejection from the moving average. So maybe if we do push up this week, we run a dollar, a dollar ten, dollar fifteen. Um, if I pull up the daily chart for you, the moving averages are crossing to the upside, which is a bullish sign. Last time we crossed to the upside, we saw about a two, two and a half dollar gain. We could see the same this time. You see that, that pop I talked about earlier. If we get a $2.50 gain this time, we'll be around that 200 moving average on the daily chart as well. So maybe look at Oxy calls. If you're not that confident, then look intraday. No real interesting. I mean, we saw an inverted hammer here and then we started an uptrend. And then we saw two hammer candles back to back. One is inside the other as well. So that kind of helped us sell off. Now, let me move to DraftKings. Ticker symbol DKNG. Obviously, like I mentioned, the Super Bowl is on right now. DraftKings, we're at $43. I'm happy. I'm a long-term shareholder in DraftKings. And I bought in the 30s. So DraftKings consolidated, kind of traded in this range between $31 and $27 for a while. And eventually, we just took off. What was the catalyst for us taking off? Earnings. So why am I pulling up earnings this time? Because of the same thing last time, Right. Now, we had our consolidation period. We pushed up again recently, but we've still got earnings to come now. So I'm seeing positive signs. Doji here from last week, Thursday, inverted, followed by an inverted hammer. So that could be something to watch. You look at the four hour chart and I like what I see. Straight from a month now, we've just been trending higher. DraftKings is on my radar for calls. What would I be price target? What would my price target be? Honestly, look, we can get back up to that fifty dollar price point and then push for the fifty two dollar price point. One thing I did note is I bought DraftKings back in twenty twenty two, so that should be somewhere here, or I guess, well, maybe yeah, beginning of twenty twenty two, so you know around thirty dollars, and. One thing I noticed is there was a double bottom slash triple bottom, but also just a regular line of support around 10. So if this were to fail earnings or miss uh, expectations and sell off, just look to see if we can pull back all the way to $10, not directly, but long term. So over the next six months, maybe the next year period, just check, you know, everything is possible in this market. Just be aware that that level of support is, you know, first $19 and then there's a strong level around $10. Who knows if we get all the way back down there? I don't think we do, but I'm just saying, you know, that's how you mark out a level of support on your chart. It's also good to just have that on your level of, on that level on your chart anyway. So yeah, that's DraftKings for you. And then Nike. I'm in Nike calls. Earnings is not till the 22nd of March. If you look at the daily chart, started to break above moving averages, 9 and 21 crossing over to the upside. Pull up the weekly chart. You'll see. We had an inside bar followed by an outside bar followed by another outside bar okay that is interesting to note and we could be getting rejected here or pushing higher and taking off very quickly i think we push higher and take off but like i said that weekly chart shows you the inside bar followed by a double outside bar so that is definitely interesting to note Almost a double inside bar too, almost, but not quite. Now, as I start to round up this video, snow, snow has been taking off. Snow has been bullish. Big tech has been bullish. Technology, 
cloud, software, a lot of those services have been bullish as of late and I'm expecting them to push higher. So you can also look at Cloudflare, tick symbol NET, pushing higher. You can also look at Datadog, tick symbol DDOG, pushing higher. Another one you can look at, Palo Alto, tick symbol PANW, pushing higher. A lot of these cloud companies, software companies as well, just pushing higher. GitLab, GTLB, pushing higher. You can see all these weekly charts, which we're seeing higher highs, we're seeing these stocks flourishing. This sector is starting to really push. After Cloudflare reported, we saw a few of those different stocks start pushing as well. So yeah, the last one I'll touch on is Coinbase because I mentioned earlier, Bitcoin is starting to push again. Coinbase jumped 7% on Friday. You can see the doji from Monday. Sorry, this is the weekly chart. There we go. You can see the doji from Tuesday and then Friday's doji as well. But Coinbase jumped 7% 7 Friday, almost $10. I like what I'm seeing with Coinbase. And with Bitcoin continuing to run, crypto continuing to run, let's see if Coinbase can get back up to the 186 point within the next few months. Who knows? Earnings might just take it all the way there. But as always, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you're thinking on trading. Let me know if you've got opinions on stocks like AMD, which we trade regularly, Nvidia, any of those stocks. And of course, as always, just you know, feel free to tap into the Discord. That's the first link in the description below. That is the Royal Trading Academy. We're active there. We're live there every day. We do the stock breakdowns there. I post my watch list in there as well. Talk about different stocks live time with everyone in there. So yeah, come check out the Royal Trading Academy. Then make sure you guys check out the stock option stuff about that. That is link number two in the box below. So make sure you check that one out. It's 10 videos that you have access to those for life. All the videos talk about how I trade, the guidance in regards to trading, terminology, what a call is, what a put is, the best ways to get around this market, especially as a beginner, and a load of other things. So check that one out as well. And lastly, follow me on all the socials at The Wealth Prince. Make sure that you check out those channels. Check out the last video I posted on YouTube as well. And if you're new to this YouTube channel, subscribe. Hit the like button as well to show some support and comment if you would like as well. So that is it for me today. I'm grateful for each and every one of you who came by and tuned in. Thank you so much for that. I got into making, you got into making. See you guys tomorrow for another video. Peace.